So recently I was going through my portrait photography portfolio and then I thought it would be interesting to see what my most used lens was, what lens had contributed most to my overall portfolio. And as I grouped the pictures together and, and looked at them, what I found was, was that the lens that I thought that I'd used the least or had contributed the least was actually the lens that had made the most pictures that were in my portfolio. And that really surprised me. And I think the lens that it is might actually surprise you too. I thought about each lens individually, looked at the pictures I was taking with them. And as I did that, it became clear to me and it's making me rethink my strategy with my lenses overall. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through my most used portrait photography lenses, why I like them and perhaps why they didn't make the biggest contribution to my portfolio. And then I'm going to tell you which was my most used lens. And it might help you guys when you're thinking about your lenses as well and the type of photography that you're doing with them. So as I go through these lenses, realize that I'm talking about them on full frame cameras. You'll have to work out any equivalencies if you're shooting on a different sensor size. So the lens that I really, really thought was going to be in first place was the 50 millimeter. What I really like about it is that it gives you this kind of editorial look. And what editorial means is it's storytelling. It's like you can take a group of images shot on that lens, give a consistent output, but at the same time, it's wide enough to include elements of what's going on that will help tell a story. So if someone's doing something, you'll be able to include that more easily. If you're in a location, you'll include a bit of it more easily. But it's a sort of minimalist way of shooting most of the time. It gives you just enough context. And that's what we often mean when it's something's editorial, is that we have context to a location or what someone's doing. It works very well in a studio and it works very well on location. The thing that I don't like, I guess, about the 50 millimeter is that I do sometimes prefer that longer look of an 85 or a wider look of a 35. Whilst I feel like when you get it wrong with the 50 millimeter, you have none of the benefits of what makes a 35 or an 85 nice. I think when you get it right, you get the best of both, but it's just harder to do it with a 50. <laughs> and I have to say, I was kind of disappointed when it wasn't my most used lens. Then I looked at the 24 to 105. And whilst I'd used the 24 to 105 a lot in the studio, don't use it a lot outdoors you can easily go through all of those focal lengths. So you want to get wide and storytelling of, you know, full length shot with clothing or getting really close for a headshot. But the reason I don't use the 24 to 105 outdoors so much is because I'm going to complain about that lens with something that I don't talk about very much because I don't care too much about it. And it's, it is the sharpness of the lens. I, I don't bother paying much attention to sharpness of lenses unless they're overly sharp or not particularly sharp. Most lenses for me fall into that. It's fine and I don't care. But the 24 to 105 is definitely not particularly sharp at f4. And when I use it in the studio, I always have to do extra steps with the sharpening to bring it up a bit. I really feel like it needs it just to bring it into what I would call a standard range. I also think the fact that it only goes to f4 has limited me in some ways because I do like to have a little bit of background separation, especially when I'm outdoors. And f4 is just at that tipping point, I think, where it's not quite enough. I could almost go as far as saying as 24 to 105 is probably the perfect studio photography lens because you can shoot at ISO 100, you're getting good image quality files out of your camera. And I think you'd be fine with that. And I've, I've always loved, 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 loved shooting the 24 to 105 in a studio setting. But the 24 to 105 was again, not my most used lens. I also knew it wasn't going to be the 70 to 200. Although I liked using this in the studio, I know that getting those full lengths are really difficult with it. And I don't use it that much outdoors. I don't get enough of the environment in as well. And both in the studio and outdoors, my most used lens that's made images that have contributed to my portfolio is the 24 to 70 2.8 Mark one from Canon. So I will briefly touch on, on why I think why this is my most used lens. You see, when people shoot with me, they're bringing clothing along that is often pretty expensive. And so what I'm doing is 90% portrait, I'd say, but it's 10% fashion. It's, it's hard to call it that. And I don't want to use the term fashion portraits or anything like that. But the outfits they're wearing, the clothing that they're wearing features quite heavily a lot of the time in what I'm doing with them. So what a lot of what I do isn't just standard portrait photography. I'm often doing sort of half length portraits. 
And that means that I'm showing the environment more and I'm also showing the clothing more. And sometimes I'm doing these full length portraits. So my portrait photography is probably not standard classical portrait photography. And because of that, it seems that I value the flexibility of a zoom lens enormously. And even when I'm outdoors, like these pictures here, this is taken on the 24 to 70 at 2.8. When you get to 2.8 on a full frame sensor or any equivalent that you have that gets you to that kind of same depth of field, 2.8 on that sort of 50 millimeters and, and so on gives you enough background separation but while still being able to see where you are that it looks pleasing. I would prefer to shoot a 50, a 1.4 or 1.2. That's probably my overall preference. But 2.8 is giving me enough background separation to sort of tick the box and say, yes, I've got background separation. The 24 to 70 is also giving me a ton of flexibility. When I thought about it more, what occurred to me was that most of the fashion photographers that I know all shoot on 24 to 70 lenses. And it's because of this same flexibility. And whilst I don't consider myself to be doing fashion, the fact that I'm often including what the people are wearing or the location, I'm not doing sort of traditional, you know, portraits like this. So I think that the flexibility of the 24 to 70 has over time trumped the other benefits of the other lenses. Having said all of that, it would be very hard for me on any of the systems that I own for me to give up a prime lens or give up a 50, an 85, or even the 35. I really value the consistent look that you get from primes and that shallow depth of field is really nice. I do think the shallow depth of field thing is a little bit overrated at times, but it is really nice. I can't deny that. I seem to go through these cycles. Where I'm starting to really like my mid-range zooms again at the moment. And that always seems to keep coming back to me, like the 24 to 70, whilst it's sort of a boring lens, it's only boring if you make it boring. It's about what you do with the lens always. It's always about your ideas and concepts and so on. And I guess it really comes down to like, how much background blur do you really need? How much consistency do you want all the time? Don't you want some variation? And the 24 to 70 is limited enough still, just, that there is a, at least a degree of consistency. You're not getting to super wide and you're not getting super telephoto at any stages. You are always getting that mid range look. And I think that what happened in my shoots was that once I saw the outfits that people had brought along and how much effort they'd put into them, it was very natural for me to then start picking up my 24 to 70 and doing a bulk of my shoots on a 24 to 70 lens. It just made the most sense. By the way, if you like the way my work looks, you should check out my workshops. I've got online workshops that you pay for once and then you can watch as many times as you like. The links are in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, consider subscribing. Give a like if you enjoyed that video. It really does help the channel. I'd like to know from you guys, what is the lens that you use the most? Maybe you just know instinctively and you're not like me who has to look and find out the hard way. It'd be really interesting to see what you guys are shooting on.